Cheddar presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Good luck is a giddy maid, fickle and restless as a fawn. She smooths your hair, and then the jade kisses you quickly and is gone. But Madame Bad Luck scorns all this. She shows no eagerness for flitting, but with a long and fervent kiss sits by your bed and brings her knitting. And so, you have them, the Luck sisters, good and bad. Two ladies who cannot be wooed or courted. They pick and choose their own time and place. If only we knew how to capture one and escape the other. If only. It's wrong. I know. It's indecent. I agree. It's immoral. I admit. Murder can never be justified for any reason. That's a fact. Then why? How can you agree to it? The price is right. <laughs> mystery drama, The Luck Sisters, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Fred Gwynn. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. We have, when you add up the minutes... Something less than an hour to relate our stories. And most of the time it's enough. We usually attempt to tell a tight and taut little tale that honors the Aristotelian strictures for the unities of time, place, and character. However, every now and then, we come up with what can only be called a saga. An epic that sprawls across a vast and multicolored canvas, rolling, rollicking, swashbuckling, filled with violence, intrigue, conflict, Adventure and sex. Well, what you are about to hear may qualify as a saga. Ladies and gentlemen, I am in the town of Bulwer, high in this Rocky Mountain Valley. Bulwer is hardly more than a hamlet. It was on its way to becoming a ghost town when suddenly an enormous vein of gold was discovered in an abandoned mine. Right now, this little village has just about been invaded by the news media. I believe we even outnumber the residents. But those residents of Bulwer, the 100 registered, tax-paying, and voting citizens of Bulwer, will each become a millionaire because the mine itself is owned by the town of Bulwer. Let us rejoin the press conference outside the store of Mayor Jefferson McDowell, who is also the town barber. Yes, sir. Town's named after Mayor Poindexter Bulwer, who was adjutant to General Grant. It later came out he was a speculator in army supplies and stole a million dollars. That's Major Bulwer, not General Grant. Uh, But by that time, he was dead. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor, what about the mine? Uh, It's the old Bulwer mine. Town grew up all around it. Never was worth much. Uh, The mine, I mean, not not the town. Yeah, how did the uh, town get possession? Well, after Major Bulwer died, and without issue, I might say, the town took it over for back taxes. Mr. Mayor, what would you say this new discovery means to the citizens of Bulwer? Well, it means, once we get her into production, everybody in Bulwer is going to become a millionaire. How was it discovered that there was gold in the mine? She's been abandoned almost a hundred years. Then, last week, little Billy Blackburn... That's uh, Bob and Eunice Blackburn's kid. Fell down a shaft. Uh, Wasn't hurt, just scared. When they dug him up, there was all this gold dust. Mm -hmm. Do you think this will change the people in this town? What kind of a stupid question is that? If, if, If you was to become a millionaire, wouldn't it change you? for supper. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, let's eat. Jeff, something's wrong. Uh, what do you think is wrong? Hmm. Maybe it's not true. The, the mine doesn't belong to the town. We're, we're, we're 
Not going to be rich? The mine does belong to the town, oh. and the town can distribute the revenue from it any way it sees fit. Then what? Jeff, are you trying to tell me maybe it all isn't on the level somehow? Maybe there's no gold? Nope. As far as we know, there's gold. Mm-hmm. Engineer come in from one of those big companies. He said it might even rival the Comstock load. Well, then, what's that look on your face? Maria, I'm... I'm scared. Scared? Scared of what? Oh. Oh, I see. Do you really see, Maria? Well, I... I, I think I do. Sure, our, our quiet, lovely, decent little town transformed suddenly into a what can I call it? A, a flesh pot filled with neon lights? The pure, fresh air poisoned by smoke and pollution? Bulwer will become a city with all those urban problems. Juvenile delinquency, crime, prostitution, and the like. That, that's what's bothering you, isn't it? No. No, 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 that's bothering me. It isn't? Why would I care what happens to Bulwer? Well, it's our home. Well, we won't be living here no longer. We'll be spending our time in sunny Spain and the Riviera in Florida. We're going to have an apartment in New York and a flat in London. Are you crazy? No, Maria. I'm just saying, when you become a millionaire, you have a responsibility to maintain a certain standard of living. Well, I never get to the point. I... I'm afraid to tell you. Oh, Whatever else you may be, one thing you are not is afraid. Maria, maybe... Maybe I don't know how to tell you. Well, well, just try. I guess I'm waiting. What? Waiting for what? For the other shoe to drop. I see. Well, what are you expecting? Something bad. Bad? Why? I don't know. Oh, then, then I don't understand. No, 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 no. That's not true. I know. I know. I I think I know. Jeff, you, you're starting to scare me. You, you're the most level-headed person I know. What What's bothering you? Something bad is going to happen. Why? Why do you say that? Because it's the history of this town. Bad follows good like night follows day. I'm not sure I yeah, understand. Yeah, well, look. Go back to the beginning, right? The town is named after a Civil War hero. Mm-hmm. It later turns out he's a crook. Bull was supposed to be the location of a great new gold strike, like Sutter's Mill or the Klondike. Hmm? Turns out to be a false alarm. All right, but that that's all ancient history. Granted. Let's talk about modern history, then. The history of the last 20 years. Remember this company was going to open a plant just outside of town, rejuvenate the economy with 500 jobs? Oh, well, I, I don't believe they were serious. What are you talking about? They already started digging the foundations. Do you remember what happened? Hmm? They went broke. That's what happened. But still, that doesn't prove anything. And the Air Force was going to put up a base on Spencer's Plateau? Well, that wasn't definite. What do you mean it wasn't definite? We were going to contract for the land. Oh, Jeff. You know, where the government's concerned, you've always got politics. But the fact is, one day it was yes, and the next day it was no. Yeah, but what can happen now? I don't know. Something... Something terrible. But I... But you can't fight history, Maria. But you yourself told me we know there's gold. Millions of dollars worth. And the engineers said it's high-grade ore. And there shouldn't be any real problems getting to it. What can happen? Maria, honey, this Hmm? is Bulwer. Depend on it. We're in trouble. What kind of trouble? Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Hmm? Oh, 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 it's you, that reporter. Uh, how come you haven't left for the rest of them? Because I think the real story is yet to happen. Uh, for example, Mr. Mayor, why do you appear to be so troubled? Hmm? Troubled? Well, obviously something's bothering you. No, tell me. You've been around. Uh, you're a college-educated man. Do you believe in fate? Well, fate is whatever happens. Then you look back at it and say, yes, that was fate. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to talk to you about the mine, if I may. The mine? Oh, 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 the mine. Yes, and the sociological impact it'll have on this tiny community. If you'll excuse me, I I, uh, I have an important appointment. Uh, at midnight? Oh, oh, my goodness. Then I'm really, really late. <laughs> uh, good night, sir. <laughs> 
this is your special reporter in Bulwer. And I can report the town is behaving in a manner close to what you might expect. There's great happiness here and great expectations. Mayor Jefferson McDowell, however, seems somewhat different from his fellow townspeople. He takes long walks at night. Those who know him say he's suddenly become very serious. Certainly, he appears to be extremely introspective. It's almost as if he knows something that is hidden from everyone else. Is it true? More on the town of Bulwer on my regular broadcast this evening. Jeff? Yeah? Darling, why aren't you asleep? I'm thinking. <laughs> All this turning and tossing is keeping me awake. Sorry. Jeff, can't you explain what's bothering you? I told you. It's this... This, this pattern of good and bad that seems to haunt Bulwer. Well, I guess it's true. Oh. I see you're not fighting me anymore. Well, surely and simply in the interest of getting my beauty sleep, I solve the problem. Hmm? What are you saying? Darling, this will be the craziest thing you ever heard. Do you believe in, in luck? Sure. Well, now let's say good luck is a good angel. So then bad luck would be... Uh, a bad angel. Right. Now, we got two of those angels in this town. <laughs> You've really got to explain this. Well, the Miller sisters, Eunice and Janice. Eunice Blackburn and Janice Howling. Those two. You lost me. You just lost me. Well, all I've been doing is exploring your subject, history. Now, here you have those twin girls, Janice and Eunice Miller. By now, they're grown women. Eunice and Janice. Yes, uh... study it. Everything that Eunice does, everything and everybody she's connected with turns out fine. On the other hand, Janice... Wait. As far back as you can remember, hasn't it been that Eunice brought everybody good luck and Janice caused nothing but trouble? No, as a matter of fact... Now, before but... you dig around for all the evidence, and there's whole volumes of it, just a couple of simple things. Janice was engaged to Tom Patterson, who went off to Vietnam and got killed. Eunice married Bob Blackburn, who put in four years, never got a scratch, got the Congressional Medal of Honor, and came back a colonel. And the mine. Little Billy Blackburn goes berry-picking with his Aunt Janice and falls down that abandoned shaft just because he was with Janice. But just because he's Eunice's son, he not only comes out without a scratch, but we strike gold. Okay. Review the past 20 years. And now maybe you know what I mean when I say I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. All right, all right. But what possible calamity can Janice bring about now? It has to follow. It has to. Remember, it was through Eunice's husband, Bob Blackburn, the Air Force was interested in building the base. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. The guy who was the head of planning came down. He was impressed. He was interested. The deal was just about to go through. We put him up for the night in Janice's house. The next day, somehow, everything cooled down. Oh, still, you you can't blame Janice. It's not time for credit, and it's no time for blame. All we can go by are facts. The same thing with the factory that was going to be built here. It was Janice who... Jeff, we have no proof. We have facts. Where are you going? Out. It's three in the morning. I know, but I don't have a minute to lose. I have to save the town. The mine, the, the gold, all of us, before it's too late. Too late for what? Well, what are we talking about? We seem to be talking about people who carry luck, good or bad, around with them. Superstition? Old wives' tale? Before you make your judgment, consider many of the commonplace things we take for granted today, like telephones, airplanes, not to mention space flight, were once old wise tales, and people who spoke about them seriously could be burned or hanged. I hope you will hang around with burning anticipation for Act Two. Structurally, 
It's a simple and relatively uncomplicated element. And yet, it has within it a mysterious essence that can completely change human nature. Or is that really true? Can we basically be altered by gold? Or does gold merely act as the catalyst to speed up changes that were always ready and waiting to happen? Who, who is it? Janice, it's me, Jeff McDowell. Well, well, what is it, Jeff? Janice, uh, I've got to talk to you. know what time it is? I know what time it is. Uh, can I, uh, can I come in? Well? Uh, Janice, I, I don't know how to say this. Say what? I, I don't even know how to begin. Well, as Miss Ballantyne, our fifth grade teacher used to say, begin at the beginning. The beginning. Uh, we go back a long way, you and I, Janice. You you never should remind a lady of her age, Jeff. <laughs> and, uh, and many things have happened. Oh, it's no use. The only way to say this is say it. Right out. Straight out. Yes. I... I want to tell you that... that... That you're in love with me. Is that it? Janice, that's not what... Do you want a divorce, Maria? No. Are you suggesting that we have an affair? Janice, listen. In a small place like this, how long do you think it could be kept a secret? Uh, you've got it all wrong. I, I, I want to ask you to leave town. No, Jeff. You've got it all wrong. It's not what I came here to talk about. I, I came here to ask you to leave town, and it has nothing to do with me or you. It's... It's for the good of Bulwer. Is that a fact? Janice, you must leave town uh, before it's too late. You ring my bell at three in the morning to tell me to leave town? <laughs> if it's a joke, I'm not amused. Uh, I'll put it this way. Look, 300 years ago, you would have been burned at the stake. Your conversation isn't getting more pleasant either. Yeah, you and Eunice, the Miller sisters... What's the history of the Miller sisters? I must ask you to leave, Jeff. You, Janice, you bring misfortune, tragedy. Eunice has always brought good things, great things, wonderful things to everyone about her. I can't believe I'm sitting here listening to this. She, she brings us good luck. You, you bring us bad. Uh, maybe it can be spread like a disease, and, and you, you could be the carrier. There's the door, Jefferson McDowell. Janice, there's no malice in this. I, 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 I promise you, I'm, I'm stating a fact. So am I. Get out. Consider, Janice, everybody who's ever been associated with you has... In, in high school, you went out with Freddie Price. So did other girls. Come on, Janice. Remember the senior album? You and Freddie were voted Romeo and Juliet. And he had a great future as a ball player. The big league scouts were here to see him. But the day he gave you his pin... He broke his arm. And that was the end of him. And what did I have to do with that? It doesn't get any better, Janice. The Patterson boy. Remember, you got engaged just before he went to Vietnam? He was killed. And, and your husband, Joe, he was killed in a plane crash. Jeff, I have had a very tragic life. Things have always gone badly. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And there's a reason for it. Are you saying it's my fault? Yes, Oh, oh, you're unaware of it. You're, you're not personally responsible for it. It's just, it's just one of those things. And you have come here at three in the morning to tell me that. Yes, because we may not have very much time. Time for what? The mine. Look, look, we could sit here for hours, going all the way back to when you were a little kid, and we could come up with hundreds of examples, but, well, here we have the mine. The rediscovery of the mine, it, it, it could mean millions, maybe billions of dollars. So, so, please, don't kill it. Kill it? How? Uh, I, I, I don't know. How did you kill all those other things? But I'm telling you, I didn't do anything. And I'm telling you, it's not what you do or what you did, but what you are. What am I? Uh, I could say a jinx. Uh, I, I could say a witch. What does that mean? 
You've heard of Lady Luck? Oh, okay. So there's also Lady Bad Luck. Janice, I'm so scared something will come up to ruin the mine. Please. Please what? Please leave town. As one of the hundred citizens of Bulwer, I understand I own one percent of that mine. Is this a scheme to steal my share? I swear to you. I, I believe with all my heart that if you stay here, there won't be any money or shares or anything for anybody. Something will happen to that mine. So I'm to leave town. Yes, Janice. Leave town and go where? Go where, Jeff? This is my home. I don't know any other place. This is all I have. Janice, I know how you feel. How? How do you know? How do you know what it feels like to be a woman who has nothing and nobody? No husband, no kids, no career. I never even went to college. They sent Eunice out east. She was the smart one, the pretty one. Janice, it, it, it isn't anybody's fault. It's the way things just happen to be, I guess. And now, you want me to give up the only thing I have in the world. My home. The answer is no. Janice. This is my home. You can't force me to leave it. Good morning. This is your special reporter in the tiny town of Bulwer, which has been struck by the golden lightning of sudden wealth. Let me say at this point that I seem to feel an unexpected reaction. You would expect most people to be exhilarated by the prospect of wealth. And yet... Most of these town folk seem sobered by it. Does this mean that they are highly mature, sensitive to the responsibilities of great wealth? Or is there something we don't know? It's dawned on me. It's finally dawned on me. What, Maria? That we're going to be rich. It may not happen. Uh, now what? Do you believe what... You were telling me about the Miller sisters, uh, 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 especially Janice. Well, I, I, I don't... Was it just talk, uh, conversation, or what? Oh, well, maybe I don't know if I believe it or not. I believe it. Jeff. Jeff, what? Am I right? Am I wrong? What do you think? Oh, I wish I knew. I believe it. I went to see Janice. But... To say what? To do what? To ask her to leave town. But how could you just ask her to leave? <laughs> That's what she asked me. Oh, what did you tell her? The truth. She's entitled to know. What did she say? She said no. Oh. So? Now what? I don't know. Oh, yes. Yes, you do. You know you're going to talk it over with Jim Del Rey, Harvey Parkins, and Colonel Bob. And then you're yeah, going to... Yeah, 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 yeah. I guess I am going to do that. But what happens next? That, I don't know. And? I guess that's the size and shape of it, Colonel Bob. What do you think of it? What do I think of it? Janice is your sister-in-law. You, if anybody, are the town's leading citizen. But you're the mayor. Only because you don't want the job. You're famous. War hero. Bob, what's your opinion? Is this just a bunch of superstitious foolishness? You seem to believe it. And from what I gather, so does everybody else in this town. Oh, then folks have been talking to you. Everybody talks to me, Jeff. I know what I am. I'm a, I'm a heck of a provincial... I got a high school education, but I never been anywhere, never done anything, just just a country boy. You've been all over the world, met all kinds of interesting, important people, so so this thing this thing what is the to it? Anything at all? When I was going to engineering school, Jeff, in our lab courses, we studied the scientific method. You you know what that is? I'm, I'm sure it's too complicated oh, for me. No, 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 that's where you're wrong. It's very, very simple. It has to do with cause and effect. You follow this? I think so. 
The classic one they give is with a dog. Every time, just before you feed a dog, you ring a bell. Why Why would you do that? Well, that, that has to do with the experiment. The, the dog hears the bell, he sees the food, he starts to salivate, you, you see? Well, that makes sense. Now then, after a while, every time the dog even hears the bell, he begins to salivate. Uh, that's what's known as cause and effect. Now, we got the same thing here. Cause and effect. Every time we get something going in this town, thanks to Janice, it goes up in smoke. Then you're saying there is something to it. Oh, sure. I knew it. I always knew it. Then why didn't you say something? Say what? And to who? Well, who to believe me? I guess the idea was before its time. But now. Now that I see that other folks have come to the same conclusion, it's, uh, it's time we all got together. What would we be getting together for? You should know, Jeff. You know. You're mayor of this town. You feel it's your duty to get something done about it. I wish I knew what it was. I, I talked to Janice. I asked her to leave town. She turned me down. Naturally. So? Where, where are we? You know where we are, Jeff. You may not like where we are. Nobody does. But we are at the point where we have to do something about Janice. I admit it, but what? I think you know, Jeff. I think you know. <laughs> You're a member in good standing of our audience. I think you know, too. Poor Janice Miller Hollings. It is her fate to be a carrier of bad luck. Such people, when found out throughout history, have suffered for it. Ah, but you say this was all in the past. Today, we are advanced, sophisticated, civilized. You want to bet? Act three will be here shortly. Society is based on it. We give up some of our liberty for the greater good. Our ancestors sacrificed the individual to turn aside the wrath of the gods and spare the tribe. A general sacrifices a battalion to save an army. For the common good, the majority can usually justify any sacrifice, especially morality. Ah, morality. How weak how fragile, how friendless she can sometimes be. You know what we have to do about Janice, Jeff. There's, there's just no way we can force her to leave town. I admit that. Besides, you've got this newspaper correspondent poking around. Uh, I wouldn't worry about him. Nobody will tell him anything. But you just admit it. We can't force Janice to leave town. That's right. <laughs> Even if she up and left, that wouldn't do any good. Why not? Because... She'd still be alive. Oh. There it is. Oh. No, Bob. We... No, we could never... All right, Jeff. Take a little more time. You talk yourself into it. I could never... Talk myself into... Murder. Jeff. Never is a very long time. I don't think you know me very well, Bob. Jeff, right now, the mayor and the town council of Bulwer, that's you, me, Harvey, Jim. We're receiving bids from mining companies to develop and exploit the property for us. The lowest one is for $250 million. We have 100 citizens, so that's a minimum of two and one-half million each. I know, I know, I know. It's better than that. Because you and Maria each get two and a half million. So do Eunice and I. Harvey and his wife have three grown sons, so his family stands to get, what, a twelve and a half million dollars. That's what's involved here, Jeff. I know, I know. So, then you know what you have to do. Jeff, 
The second the idea occurred to you, you knew how it would have to end. You've been fighting it. Yes, I've been fighting it. We've all got to agree. We have all got to agree. Have you spoken of this to anyone else? Yes. Yes, I have to just about everyone. This thing has been gathering momentum without you. Now you've got to come on board. How about the women? Oh, yes, they have to be part of it. You mean you told Eunice? Oh. <laughs> She's the one who convinced me. Good evening. This is your special correspondent in Bulwer, Colorado. This is the strangest town I've ever seen. The prospect of wealth, fabulous wealth, has frightened every inhabitant. There will be wealth. Each of them shall become rich beyond their dreams. I understand the bidding to exploit the property will go as high as half a billion dollars. Ladies and gentlemen, divide that a hundred ways. I have been promised an interview with a lady who lives in this town later on. Janice Miller Hollings. It's wrong. Yes. Yet it's the will of the majority. Well, that's not going to help. It's murder. And it's wrong. Yet, I know after we say everything there is to say, we're... We're going to go along with it. Are we? Yes. We have no choice. It's just too much money. At least five million dollars for you and me. Maybe more, maybe twice that much. Oh. Ten million dollars. It isn't right, Jeff. It isn't right. I know, I know. Well, what I mean is, it isn't right to tempt human beings like this. It's just too much money. It's it's worth Janice Miller's life. Janice Miller Hollings. You want to know the truth? The terrible truth? I never liked her. All right, all right. You can say that. I'll, I'll say it too. Say what? Whatever it is, we're we're starting to justify it. Finding reasons for it. Yes, I, I realize. We have to. If we want to be able to look at ourselves. I'll never be able to again. Uh, you will. Oh, yes. As time goes on, you'll find reasons to show you did the right thing. We'll be convinced that she was the most evil woman in the world. And we'll discover facts to prove it. Eventually... We'll all feel like saints for our part in this. Oh, Jeff, I... I... Uh, you know how I always like to study history, Maria? Well, most of your history is rewritten. Oh, Jeff, we... we're going to have blood on our hands. <laughs> Nothing like gold to hide the color of blood. Oh, yeah, we'll have a few bad days. And then it'll be all over. Hi there, Miss Miller, or uh, is it Mrs. Hollins? It can be anything you like. You promised me an interview, remember? Did I? You most certainly did. Now, I understand you have a twin sister, and the two of you are as different as night and day. Well, if you know all about me, why do you wish to interview me? None of us really know all about another human being, Miss Miller. Nor should we. You strike me as a very sensible person. I'm sure we could have a most agreeable interview. I was warned about big city types like you. I promise I'll be all business. Oh, but I'm not too sure I like that. Well, why don't I uh, take you to dinner this evening? Why don't I cook dinner at my house? I can't think of a single reason against it. Till this evening, then. Jeff? Oh, oh, hello, Bob. I figured the shop would be empty this time of day. Uh, how about a little trim? Sit right down. You, uh, you spoke to Maria? Yeah. And? And this thing's like that ancient, uh, what do they call that terrible machine nobody could stop? A juggernaut. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. It just rolls over everybody and everything. You, you just can't make any argument against it. That's true. So... So we're just going to blithely kill Janice Miller. Well, it won't be blithely. Nobody's going to enjoy it. Do we have to even talk about it? Yeah. Yeah, we do. 
What's there to say? <laughs> you know, Jeff, I've been barbered in New York, London, Paris. I even spent 50 bucks for a haircut, but none of those characters can touch you. <laughs> What's there to talk about now? How to do it. A <laughs> hundred citizens in this town. Funny how we could get 99 to agree to kill one of them. Why is it funny? Well, maybe it is. <laughs> because that's life. You surprised? I'm surprised it was so easy. It took so little time. Jeff, the, the leading citizens should do it. Yeah. Yeah, it's up to us, pillars of the community, I guess. You, me, Harv, and Jim. The mayor and the three councilmen. Well, what do we do? We just can't shoot her, can we? Good Lord, listen to what I'm saying. No, 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 we can't. It, ha it has to be an accident. Uh, it, Jeff, you think you're taking too much off the front there? If I thought I was taking too much off the front, I wouldn't do it, would I? What, uh... What kind of accident is she supposed to have? Well, fortunately, her house is just across from the abandoned shaft opening. Oh, what do you suggest? That we throw her down there? <laughs> Nothing that crude. Dynamite. <laughs> There's nothing subtle about dynamite. You see, this, uh, this company, International Precious Metals, that's uh, bidding for the mine, they have a truck here. It's uh, got dynamite in it. It's parked near the shaft that's just across from Janice's house. It can uh, blow up. Huh? Oh. How do I know? An accident. But her place is at least 100 feet away. Is there that much dynamite in the truck? Oh, yes, there certainly will be. And, uh, who... The four of us will help wire. And we'll have an automatic fuse to set it off. Huh. Then that's it. All of our problems are over. When do you want to do it? We want to do it as soon as it gets dark. About seven o'clock. Hmm. Be there. Guess we're all here and ready. That's a lot of dynamite. Has to do a big job. Uh, Jeff, you attach these wires. Yeah. Careful. Come on, Jeff. We can't stop now. But wait. But nothing. Now, this is it. Start walking. Less than a minute, it'll be all over. Bob, you sure it'll do the, the, the job? I'm sure. You're, you're sure nothing else will the be... The only house within 300 yards. The thing will rattle windows all over town, but all the damage is going to be directed toward that. I, I give all the money I'll ever see from that mine not not to have done this. Now, how fast can you run? I, I estimate we're 100 yards away from the dynamite. We've got 15 seconds. Can you run 115 seconds? Well, in school I could uh, run 109.8. Now, here we go. you got 11 seconds back there. Pull a fuse. Hey, a ten. Now, you passed the point of no return. We better, we, we better hit the ground. Five, five, four, three, two, one. Bang, go. Bob, it, it didn't go off. We're saved. Yeah. Well, I could have been a couple of seconds off. Gentlemen, this is your reporter at the town of Bulwer. Except there is no town of Bulwer any longer. It is buried under millions of tons of dirt and rock. The only survivor is the luckiest woman in the world, Miss Janice Miller, who is standing beside me now. Miss, Miss Miller, what exactly did happen? Well, uh, we don't get them often. But when we do, we do... This was an avalanche. As you know, Bulwer is, uh, was in a valley, hemmed in by very steep mountains. But what set it off, Miss Miller? Well, uh, you and I 
heard what set it off. Oh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I should explain. Miss Miller and I had made a date for her interview to be taped at dinner, which she kindly offered to prepare for me at her house. But at the last moment, for some reason, we decided to drive to a restaurant in Council Fork some 40 miles away. Uh, why did we decide to do that, Miss Miller? I don't know. We just decided. What did set off the avalanche, Miss Miller? We were a long way off. But we heard an explosion. Yes, I thought it was thunder. If you'd been raised in a mining town, you know the sound of dynamite. But where was the dynamite? I noticed a truck outside my house just before we left. I'm sure there was dynamite in it. But what could have set it off? Who knows? Anything. Or nothing. That's dynamite. And this explosion triggered the avalanche? Definitely. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an eerie sight... Here was once a hamlet of over a hundred human beings. All of them are now covered by tons of rock. This disaster struck without warning with bewildering speed. There was no time to sound an alarm, no time to make an escape. I suppose all this debris will be bulldozed away, and this fantastically rich mine will belong to the sole survivor of Bulwer, Miss Janice Miller. Miss Miller... You are the luckiest lady in the world. Fortune's favorite. <laughs> Funny. I always thought of myself as Miss Fortune's favorite. But I guess if you live long enough, the worm turns. The road turns. And your luck turns. Of course. There's a category of stories known as the Getting hoist by your own petard type. Or the scaffold of Haman kind. You know, Haman who built the scaffold for Mordecai and wound up stepping off it himself. We love such stories because you can't beat poetic justice. And they speak for themselves. At the end, they leave me with nothing to say except that I shall return in a few moments. began these ceremonies with a poem by Heinrich Heine, which celebrated the ladies who control fortune, good and bad. And if they are fickle, volatile, and unpredictable, would you have them any other way? Isn't it marvelous to live in suspense, uncertain of the morrow, not knowing which of these ladies will knock on your door and enter your room? And do you require a word of caution? Well, remember... Since luck is a lady, treat her like one. And she will always treat you like a gentleman. Our cast included Fred Gwynn, Bryna Rayburn, Russell Horton, and Carol Titel. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Uh, Ten grand is certainly cheap enough to save your life. If I come in here, you could be signing your own death warrant. Why? Oh, Lieutenant, isn't it possible that some people may be motivated by idealistic considerations? Oh, sure, sure, sure. In the movies, in the books. Because that's what we'd like to believe. But you and I, we can't afford to believe that way. I mean, you're a doctor, I'm a cop. We know how people behave when life and death are on the line. But still, there are those few Yes, pe yes, every now and then you run across a saint. But somehow, I don't think that's you, Mr. Tarbell. So, I'm going to ask you that question again. Why are you here? Well? Uh, Lieutenant, I... I have a confession to make. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by x -Lax. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.